Hi, I'm Terry, one of the Consumer Technology Specialists here at Mid-Continent Public Library. And today we are going to look at part two of our three-part series about word and mailing labels. Today we are going to especially look at mail merge using the ribbon buttons and we are going to use Excel as the data source. The address list that we are going to use comes from Excel and I've already opened it so we could quickly look at it. As you can see in row one, it has the column names or the field names that we will use in our mailing labels as well. So we have last name, first name, street, city, state, and zip. To create our mailing labels, we first need to open Word and then open a blank document. And I've already opened that new blank document. So from here, we're going to go up above the ribbon, kind of in the middle, where we can find the Mailings tab and click on it. Now as we go to the left, the second to the left group is Start Mail Merge, and really everything to the right of that is grayed out until we do these first steps in the Start Mail Merge group. So let's go to the very first button here, the Start Mail Merge, and we'll click on its drop-down. And we're going to get a list of ways that we can create a mail merge. Now, letters is probably not a surprise where we can create customized letters, but you can even create email messages um, if you have Outlook and Word working together. Below that, you could create envelopes, and below that, we could create labels, which is what we are going to do. So let's click on Labels. And that brings up the Label Options dialog box, which may be familiar to you, but let's quickly go through the choices here as well. Starting at the top, the printer information gives us two choices, and the second one here, page printers, is what most of us are going to choose. Um, very few of us still have continuous feed uh, printers, which would be kind of the old dot matrix printers, so we would select page printers. And then below that, we have label information. And the first choice here is which label vendor we want to choose. And mine has defaulted to Avery US Letter, but it may not. So let's click the drop down very quickly and look at some of the other choices. This all depends on the package of labels that you purchase. And so look at that package, and it will tell you if you have a Microsoft label or a 3M label or of course, Lab Avery has a bunch of labels, but there are even specialized labels for say, um, Office Depot, or uh, down here is also Staples. So any of those packages might be what you find as you go shopping. Quite a few of the packages, when you look at them, will also give you an Avery equivalent, as Avery is kind of the gold standard here. But we'll go back to our Avery US letter choice. And then below that, that brings up a list of product number. And Avery has bunches of different kinds of labels and postcards that you might want to choose. So scrolling through might take a while, but what I'm going to do is click just on a random choice and then very quickly type the number that I know I need, which is 5160. There we go. And sure enough, we have address labels. Now on the right, it gives me some very basic information about that label. It tells me that it's an inch high and it's uh, about two and a half inches wide. But you know, there might be some labels that are close to that size. I don't know if this is exactly what I want. So I can go to the left to the details button, click on it, and this gives me a lot more information. 
So for example, it tells me that the top margin of that label sheet is a half inch, and then I will start seeing the labels. Um, over here on the right though, probably what I look at the most is the number of cross, which is three, and the number down, which is 10. And that really is kind of a standard mailing label. And it even reminds me that I've chosen a letter size sheet and not say legal. So we'll click OK. Now that is really all that we need to select with this particular window, so I'm going to click OK in the lower right. And now we have kind of an outline of each label that we would want to put information in on our label sheet. What we need to do next, and it's really easy to tell from our window, is that now that we've started the mail merge, the next thing we want to do is select recipients and add those to our document. Let's go back to the Start Mail Merge group, and we can see that to the right of that group we still mostly have grayed out buttons, so it's a really good hint that we need to select that Select Recipients button, and we'll click it. And then we have three choices. Now the top two are the most likely options for what you would like to do. This type a new list may be a little more complicated than you might suspect in that when you type a new list, you actually open another window and another kind of software to type in that information. The document that you create is then directly linked to Word. One word of caution is that if you want to use this list over and over, or maybe for something besides the mailing labels, you may have a slight difficulty finding that particular list, and it may not want to cooperate because it is linked to this particular document. So, if you don't have any issues with that, you might type a new list. However, I suspect that you may decide that your best option is to use an existing list, which is what we will do, and we'll click on that choice. From here, I'm going to go to my Documents folder, and then I've created a folder for my address list. So let's open that, and here's my address list Excel workbook. I'm going to double click to open it. And that opens a new window that's named Select Table. Now if I had a larger workbook, I might see more sheets listed in this window, but I have a very small workbook and only one sheet that has information on it, so Word is smart enough to know all of that and select that first sheet that has my address list. The only other thing that we need to be careful to look at is in the lower left, we have a checkbox. And this says that the first row of data contains column headers. We know that to be true, so we want to be sure to check that box before we go to the right and click OK. From here, we can see that we are all ready to add information to this very first label, and then how we set up that first label will be copied to all of these successive labels. Now that we've selected our recipient list, you can see that the rest of the uh, ribbon here has mostly uh, kind of come to life and is colorized and no longer grayed out. But let's look at this last button in the Start Mail Merge group, which is Edit Recipient List, and we'll just look at it briefly. But when we click on it, we can see that this could really help us, uh, especially if we have a really large list, and we want to, for example, select some of the people, but not all of the people. We could check and uncheck boxes. We could sort, we could filter, we could find duplicates. And as for especially large uh, mailing lists, this could be a really big help, but we're going to close out because we want to use all of our people in our list. And that takes us to then the Write and Insert fields, and we need to find this Insert Merge Field button. When I click on it, I can see that it lists all of the columns or field names that came directly from our spreadsheet. 
and my um, insertion point here on the first label is saying all right let's add all of that information the way you want it here so let's see if I add a label I really would start with my first name so let's do that and when you look at first name you can see that you sort of have double arrows on either side of where it says first name that means that that is a field name and not the literal first name so now that we have that let's see when I type I type first name and then I go to my keyboard I press the space bar and then I would put in my last name so let's go back to insert merge field and select last name now just as you would with regular typing you would press enter to go down to the next line and we'll go back to the insert merge field button this time add in the street and we can press enter that moves our insertion point down another line back to the insert merge field button we can type city now after city when we type we add a comma and a space so we need to still add those in go back to insert merge field uh, let's see we did city so now we need to do state we'll add another space from the keyboard go back to the insert merge field button and add in a zip this next step once we have all of our field names on our labels the way we want them is a step that I personally just forget once in a while and so what we're going to do is go over to again that write and insert fields group but we're going to look for a kind of small button that isn't as evident as some of those other big buttons. We're going to look at update labels because we need to copy those field names to all of the other labels on the page. So let's click update labels and wow now it not only just says next record and all those other labels but it also has all of the fields in approximately the same order as what we have in that very first label. As good as these labels are looking, I'm a little concerned because I see here in the second label that the first name and the last name are on two separate lines. Boy, I don't want that to look like that in my finished label. So I want to get some way to preview what the labels will actually look like. I can do that by going to the right of the Write and Insert Fields group to preview the results. So let's click on that button. And when I do, wow, we can see that all of the uh, city names are fitting so that the address fits on one line very nicely. Everything is fitting within the borders of each label. These are looking really good. Now you do have some ways to work with large address lists that might require five sheets of labels or ten sheets of labels. For example, you could scroll through and find a particular record. Now when you do that, uh, let me type record five for example, which I believe would be Joanne Torres. Let me type the five and press enter. Now she will show up as the first label and then I could look at that and say mm, is that correct make sure everything is all right and if it is then you can always go back to the beginning of your list by clicking on this first button that's the arrow pointing to the vertical line. And now we have our entire list again. Uh, with really large lists, you might also want to be sure that you included someone in the list, and so you could do a search and find a particular recipient. For our last step, we're going to follow our ribbon down all the way to the far right to the Finish group, where we have the Finish and Merge button. When we click on that button, we have several choices again, and you may decide that print documents sounds pretty good, uh, but with print documents, when you click that button, your only choice is to send these labels directly to your default printer. So make sure if you make that choice, you have your label sheets already in the printer ready to go. The only thing is, 
if you haven't made sure that how these labels print actually works with those labels, then you could have wasted a label sheet. So a lot of people will take this first choice, edit individual documents. When we click that, it says, all right, what do you want to merge to a Word document? Now, when we do this, we can say, well, I want to merge all the records, and we'll say, well, okay. But notice that we could say we only want to merge one record, or maybe records two through five. But we'll click OK. And now, if we look at our title bar, we can see that this is now called Labels 1. Now, we could do a Save As and save this with a different name if we wanted to do that. Let me move that just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. But we have the option now of printing these labels on a blank sheet of paper so we can compare the blank sheet of paper with the label sheet to make sure these labels are printing correctly. And we have the because we have the option to save this document, we can find it again and reprint these labels over and over and over again. To learn more about Word, be sure to explore our online resources at mymcpl.org forward slash online learning. There you'll find such great resources as Universal Class, Lynda.com, Who Knew It, and Learning Express Library. Be sure to tune in to part three of this series on September 23rd, when we will discuss how to do mail merge another way, which is using a step-by-step -step wizard. But also be sure to tune in every week on Wednesday at one o'clock as we present a variety of tech topics.